This painting is called Insight by Feel slash Autopsy. If you like this painting, please consider giving this video a thumbs up, sharing it, or commenting something so more people can see it. This is the third headless face, headless slash faceless painting of three. It's definitely my favorite, perhaps because of the posing of the body. I follow the concept sketch almost to a T, but I wanted a tooth or two. This painting would be fine without them, and ultimately, they only added more of a technical challenge for me, considering this is a uh, 11 by, what is it, 12 by 16? I don't know, it's a smaller canvas than what I normally had worked on in the past. When I felt the feels, I felt that inspired this like whole concept. I felt red, it was very red. I envisioned a lot, like this whole thing, to be permeated with red. As you will see, my need for balance wouldn't allow that, so I did a red aura, if you will, a, a heat signature, bleeding out of the body in a way. Funny enough, I've had it in my mind for years to attempt to do a monochrome painting. As I said, it's been in my mind for years. I can't just, I can't, I can't bring myself to try. I think it would be so interesting, yet so frustrating, and I think I would fail. Since I'm a member, I might have to put myself through that for entertainment's sake. In retrospect, I'm amazed I executed tea so well for the painting Taunt and Rabid. I don't know what year I did that in, but it, it, looking at it, every time I'm like, oh, I did that. I don't know how I did that. Although that was a bigger canvas, still, this painting is very different, and I love it for that. Today, I can say that it is my pride and joy, but I know that's until I paint another one that will likely be over it. Autopsy is in the title of this painting, coincidentally. I did watch up to the fourth episode. Well, four and a half. I didn't know where it was going. It was very, it was very slow paced. The Guillermo, Guillermo de Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. I was very excited for it, I guess. Looking forward to it. Excitement denotes like a level of joy over the experience. I was looking forward to it. I don't know why, because I don't really like watching things, but I saw his name. I was like, oh yeah, okay. Um, the third episode was entitled Autopsy, and it's the only one that I really liked. But then again, I only made it to the fourth, and there are eight episodes. So it's, it's, it's not that hard, but they're each like an hour, and it's just like, they're so slow-paced. And it's not building suspense. It's not doing anything for me. Uh, and the second one I was jaded by, because I've read a book or two about grave robbers. The most notable being The Impossible Girl by Lydia Kang. The girl in the book... Um, is like, I think she's Chinese and white, and she's an aspiring, aspiring autonomist who robs graves for their the oddities that the corpses have while also having an oddity of her own. So yeah, um, and then the other one, I, I have a book called The Victorian Book of the Dead, where they detail odd ways people died in the Victorian era. One of those ways um, is ingesting a mouse. Which, I think, when I told my sister about it, she said that that was a form of torture that people used. And I'm like, I don't know, but, I mean, something burrowing its way out of you while you're alive, and it's alive inside of you. is like, I mean, that's mute, that's like dual whore. But anyway, um, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't moved by the Lovecraftian sea monster element. That's not a spoiler at all, because there are YouTube videos about it, I think, so far. I've seen a few of them. I've not watched them, but I've seen them suggested to me. I'm scared of the ocean. And there was a Montreality video where Trippy Red, um, he said he had, like, a romantic date on the beach with his girlfriend. And I was like, oh, hell no. The beach, the ocean, the tempestuous sea, a raging deathscape, and giant toilet. That's not it. And I like to think I'm out there, you know? I like to think, but fuck no to the oceans. For me, and, oh, aquatic animals really creep me out. Even goldfish. That's not my habitat. That's not my world. I can't tread water either, so it's, it's done for me. It's done. Shifting gears. <laughs> I was listening to As by Stevie Wonder, and I couldn't help but equate him with Pan. Well, the uh, good musicians and or singers in general, I, I think, could, should, could and should be equated with Pan. 
They wait a while back, maybe a week or so ago. I don't know. I never know with time unless I write it down, and even then. The point is, I read a short story from The Women of Weird Tales called um, Great Pan is Here by Gray Lespina. The quote that makes a correlation for me, and hopefully for you, if you're listening, um, for the first time in her poor mortal existence, she has become her natural self, uninhibited by silly conventions and prudish teachings. And later in the story, a nymph is described as dancing like she's part of a Bacchic orgy. I hope I said that word right. But I'm like, what a luscious depiction. Like, oh, scene captured. It could be because I associate the song as with the scene from The Best Man with Nia Long and, you know, the guy, Tay Diggs, Tay Diggs. But it really does inspire something ecstatic, divine, a carrying away of passion that Stevie Wonder really does well with his songs. At least the popular ones, I guess. Um. Sidebar. Recently, I realized that Kareem Bailey Ray's voice really reminds me of Minnie Ripperton. It's something about her emotive inflections. The song Baby This Love I Have For You by Minnie Ripperton is the song that really made me realize it. Because she doesn't do um, the whistle notes. I think that's what, and yeah, and she doesn't do the whistle notes. And I'm like, this is so Kareem Billy Ray's cover of Is This Love and or Closer. If you don't know either of that songs, you know, um, either of those songs, then this, <laughs> I think most of what I say probably doesn't mean anything to anybody but me. But I'm here. I'm here. I'm doing this. I also just adore Pan. I like the chaotic neutrality of him. Yet he is a god. And I just, it, it's. Oh, it just really does something for me. In the Spook series, he's very much that same way when he agrees to help Alice. And then, ooh, especially in Pan's Labyrinth, he's a very gray character, neither good nor bad. And, you know, maybe the epitome of an antihero. At least in the things that I'm super familiar with and what I understand of, like, the ideology of him as a god. Last thing, the two songs of this painting... Um, Screamin' Jay Hawkins, There's Something Wrong With You. Underrated, again. Um, he's black, a very, uh, shock rock, performative, um, like, Ty the Creator before Ty the Creator, if that makes sense. Tell me if you agree, if you are listening. And then, um, the second song is A Luther Maniac by Neon Hitch. Give them a listen, if you care to understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, if you take anything away from this, it is art. Truly art. Thank you.